Hello and welcome back to Loren, the Amazon Princess. We just fought Mother Mort, so let's continue. You've doomed yourselves. Such foolish company. So I've defeated Mother Mort. The necromancer fell to the ground and withered away until she became ash, revealing that magic had been hiding her true age. Failed Undead Pact. Good. One less bad guy in the world. That was a little fun. It smells terrible in here. I'm going to lose my breakfast. Hold it, Draco. We have to get out of here first. Right, so presumably... If I just look at the old quest log... Yeah, we're now just down to stop the Barbarian and stop the Succubus. I'm still going to go back to the Varrock Lair. The big the party was standing outside of the big cave, once inhabited by Vork, the only sound the desert wind. Search for the Death Knight. Ask. We've heard enough. Okay, we're just leaving him be. Our matters are not resolved. We will return. Will you? Yes, yeah, so we've now taken out her, which means that I think presumably he'll be on our side later. Not completely sure. Right, so if we examine stop the barbarian outskirts of Horus. Right, so we either go for the Barbarian or the Succubus, so we either head to Horus or to Grand Tree. Let's start with the uh, providing of loot, actually, while I remember. And where's she at? Well, hello. Let's equip the Necklace of Leadership. And Draco's already got some decent Adding. Chambara doesn't, so oh, she's just got a simple cloth shawl, so let's give her Mort's mantle. Because that seems like the kind of thing she'd like. Okay, happy with that. And quick check, not expecting them to have anything to say, but you never know. No, nope. I'm going to click on him. The detection of which of these guys you're trying to click on seems to be a little finicky at times. Yo, know, it's, it's at worst very mildly annoying, but, you know, worth mentioning. She's not in the mood. Break camp soon. Need to be alone. Nothing new with him. And... Okay, nothing there. Alright, sorry for having to do that quite so often. As I said, it would be quite nice if there was a way of telling when they've got something to say to you, but other than that, that's my only comment, so let's head to Horus. The city of Horus was in flames. Wives screamed for their children to run to safety, and the men rushed to douse the fires that were destroying their homes. In the middle of the chaos were General Samel and a handful of Imperial soldiers directing the relief act. Lorraine and Elnor ran up to him. Are we too late? About time you showed up. Now maybe someone can save this city. What's left of it anyway? Who did this? Where are they? An army of orcs. We're able to turn them away, but they are circling back around for another attempt to raise Horus to the ground. Orcs, you say? An army of them. And demons. The word warranted a scowl from everyone in the party. How is that possible? The orcs are tribal creatures, just like the nomads. Everyone looked to Amakuki, well aware that he had deep insight into nomadic folklore. It is known that clans unite under a single banner when a great hero presents himself. That sounds about right. They are being led by a foul barbarian who is probably the great hero you mentioned. Amakuki almost wins from hearing his people called barbarians but in the company of orcs, he could not deny that whoever led them was most likely worthy of the term. Does he have a scar over one of his eyes? Samel evaluated the dwarf girl for a moment. He does. She went silent and turned away. Lorraine unsheathed the swords in the next moment. Then let's take his head and scatter those orcs across the plains. Princess Lorraine, is it such a good idea to rush head first into an army like this? You have to look for an alternate strategy because meeting them on a battlefield will only get you all killed. There are too many of them, even for me. Are we just supposed to parlay with those things? Don't worry, I'll think of a plan for us. For now, we should help out the town. Loren nodded reluctantly, but then she did just that. Elnor was left to come up with another way of stopping the orcs. She decided that she should start by talking with the party members, since some knew what they were about to face. Okay, let's go and talk to these people. Do you have any advice? So, you are formulating a plan to get rid of Horus the Barbarian. Have you tried speaking with Amakuki? He is their kind. That's a good idea. 
Get to it. You wish to know more about nomadic culture? Yes. Are the orcs truly similar to the nomads? In some ways, not all. Orcs live in groups like clans, but there are no real leaders outside of an alpha who gets it his way. But I have seen separate clans fall under the authority of a single alpha, who has not only strength. What else besides strength? Intelligence. So Krull has united these orcs because he's not only deadly but smart. This is going to be much more difficult than I thought. You're considering battle with them. Our choices are limited. We cannot fight them all and plan to survive. I haven't forgotten. What do you suggest? Getting rid of the army. That's not helpful. However it was, Elnor was able to take her new knowledge of the orcs and use it to her advantage. If the orcs were following Krull because he was a great leader, she need only prove that he was not that great after all. Hmm. You seek a non-violent resolution to this orc situation, don't you? Yes, I do. There are those that you can talk these things out with, and there are those that need a good punch to the face to sort out. In my opinion, the barbarian is the second type. Dora, look after you, or is it just me? I was going to ask you the same thing. She looks troubled. Yeah, she's been acting strange since we left the Amazon place, looking all distant. I'll look into it. Well, Dora clearly knew the guy. Dora? Uh, huh, what? I'm sorry, what's wrong? You look nervous about something. I ain't acting weird. You're just imagining things, I swear. Is that so? Then how come you knew the barbarian had a scar over his eye? You know something about him, and I need to know it. I just know about him, that's it. Is he infamous where you come from, then? Her face contorted into a rare shade of anger. Something like that, yeah. What can you tell me about him, then? He deserves to die. There was a moment of silence after she said it. She meant her words entirely, and that took Eleanor by surprise. Why? He's a murderer. She blinked rapidly and looked away. So, of course. Did he kill someone you knew? Her eyes lowered even further, and she drew a shuddered breath. No, not just someone. Everyone. What? That's... I know, I know. Awful sad. Just downright unfortunate. If I waste too much time thinking about what happened, I'll just go crazy. You have to tell me what happened. Why? No! Dora, I have to know everything about him if we're going to take him down. She was quiet for a very long moment, battling herself from wanting to help to get rid of the barbarian, but also not wanting to relieve whatever horror had flailed for her. He was just passing through. My family offered him our home because no one else in town wanted to. We gave him Papa's bed for the night. But then he wanted Papa's sword too, but Papa wouldn't let him, so he just... And then, well, what do you think? Everyone tried to stop him, but he was unstoppable. That's all that can be said. I'm hungry. She quickly wiped one of her eyes and left the campfire without another word. From her tragic story, Elnor learned that Krull was a dishonest person who only cared about getting what he wanted, and that also he was a frighteningly formidable opponent. No, I don't know anything about that barbarian or those orcs. You can leave me alone. You don't even have a suggestion for a plan. I have a million suggestions, but they're all about you leaving me alone. Very well, no need to be rude. We should be focused on our battle with Krull. I'm working on it, ma'am. Have you learned all you can about our enemy yet? I'm still looking into it. Do you have any ideas? Yes. Ask someone else for ideas. Yes, Majesty. Yeah, that's blowing helpful. What do you think of Krull? What kind of question is that? You're so forward. Just because he's a no-bad, he'll be tall and have huge muscles and be very handsome. He's evil, right? I can't think he's attractive. Not that I do, because that would be wrong. So very, very... You were asking about battle plans, weren't you? No, it's my fault. I'll be more clear next time. I'm going to go hide under a rock now. Bye! <laughs> is there no way we can solve this problem at Horus without violence? It's unlikely. I was afraid of that. Do you have any ideas? Shouldn't we try to appeal to them first? If they are not all demons, then they have something else driving them. There has to wait to get them to leave without fighting them all. That barbarian that the general described. Yes, what about him? I know him, actually. Not simply know of him? Not quite. He was once a sword for hire. The elves often recruit mercenaries to help escort caravans outside the forest. I take it you were a mercenary too. I remember this barbarian crawl, because he had the most garish scar across his face. He was a one-eyed swordsman, and that fascinated me. He's blind in one eye. Precisely. That is no disadvantage. He's a complete monster in battle. Actually, I fear what the world would be like if he had a full pair. 
You have a familiar gleam in your eyes. Why are you so interested in him? There is much to admire about him. But what's worth even more admiration is the masterful elf that manages to take him down. Ah, he's another challenge for you. But it is more than him simply being an obstacle to conquer. I have not yet finished my story. I and the other mercenaries were escorting a caravan to Hammerhands, but we were ambushed. <coughs> Apologies. The troubling thing about Kroll is that he did not fend off the ambushes. Instead, when it was clear that some cards would be captured, he switched sides completely. What? He set up that ambush? Believe it or not, I don't think so. He fought as many bandits as he did mercenaries that day. I think he just saw an opportunity to take advantage of the situation. If you ask me, that's typical barbaric behaviour, but he has no mercy in him. The workers are in the habit of surrendering their goods in exchange for their lives. Kroll took both. Elmer was disgusted. A warrior who would not accept someone else's surrender is honourless. But she did learn that Kroll would take advantage of a situation if it presented itself. Hmm. So I'm assuming I need to return to Horus now. Elnor quickly found Laurent to tell her everything that she had just learned. Together, they considered a plan to draw Kroll away from his horde. She ordered everyone to the outskirts of Horus as soon as possible. The Orc army was their destination. They need only fight enough to get Kroll's attention. As on other occasions, they could retreat and camp, but their enemies would become stronger in the next fight. Zero percent of gun. Let's attack a big group. We can take them. Oh, hey, darn it. Oh, gonna have to take out that mench. Let's try with some paralysis. I'm not actually expecting it to paralyze all of them. Eh, a couple of them. Oh, there's two healers. Wonderful. Well, they're weak to water. All the ice. So let's hit the entire back row with frost. Dead. Dead. Fabulous. Takes the big problem out of the equation. No mercy. 40% chance of being hit. Not boss. Excellent. Kill him. One more time. It's paralyzed. We can't do anything. Is now Fabulous. We call that a tough fight. Ha! All about having the right party. 25% of the girl. Oh dear, this could take a while. Okay, once again. Let's poison the entire back row. Got to try. Okay, the entire back row is guarding itself. Oh, well, it's casting healing spells. Bloody healing spells. Alright, you want to play like that? Fine. Mass paralysis all around. Let's see how many of them will hold. Yeah, because it's double strike in the front row. Fine. Annihilate the front row, Draco. Out of the front row is completely out of the equation. Strike. Massive damage on him. Strike. Strike. This is your end. Oh yes, and strike. Save your this mana. is almost fun. Save your energy as well. They were honorless, and the death brought them no different. So yes, I suspect I'm gonna have to fight a few of these. Ooh, ring of fire resistance, cool. I think that's the first ring I've actually seen. 52%. Attack another big group. Still pretty happy with this party selection. Oh, no healers in this one. Excellent. That makes my job quite a bit easier, actually. Smart yeah. poison the back row. Yeah, two of them poisoned. And I don't think they can do anything to stop that poison from killing them, can they? Paralysis. Because it's worth double hitting the front row. Nope. That's fair enough. Draco. Please blast them. And, uh, 
kill the one who's not poisoned. Yeah! Okay, you can kill the center. And Elnor, kill the left. Do you like me? Or do you like me? <laughs> you like me. Wonderful fight. I, I love fights that are just really straightforward and simple. We battle to get Sorks, 81% of the goal. One more big orc group ought to do it. Okay. Okay, they've got him on the back row, so let's close the entire back row. We're all going defensive. Fine. Let's regenerate. Let's get our health back up a bit. Draco. Front row. I nice hope this blast. is slightly uncomfortable. We're in. Keep that next time. Kill. <laughs> on it. <laughs> Knew that was coming to <laughs> today. Oh no. Strike. <laughs> and we can't do any serious damage. <laughs> Kill. Poison the small sledge of that inside back row. Well, got that guy was guarded, but that's okay. Meteor no strike. Excellent. That's for those guys dealt with. The head of their hundredth orc flew from its body and into the piles forming around them. The party had cut its way through too many orcs, and Kroll was still nowhere to be found. More orcs charged forward. In frustration, Loran simply called out the barbarian's name. Crawl! Crawl! The approaching orcs slowed and then split away to reveal a path. Kroll had heard the call and was responding. A tall, monstrous man showed himself, with a scar over one eye and two massive warhammers in his hands. Doris took a step backwards instinctively. He said nothing for a long moment as his army and Lorenz's party repositioned themselves defensively. He looked inappropriately amused. You kill many orcs. You will disband your army immediately and face imperial punishment for your crimes. His smile only deepened. I'm a kooky. The gladiator broke from Lorenz's ranks and walked immediately up to Kroll. Even though I'm a kooky was a large man, the other barbarian was much larger. They stared intently at each other, growling with their eyes. And then I'm a kooky spat at Kroll's feet. The barbarian cursed with hot rage. He quickly wiped his weapons off on his shoulder and impaled them in the ground before him. Amakuki did the exact same with his sword. They both proceeded to grunt violently at each other. What in the world are they doing? You are witnessing a primitive ritual of the nomads to arrange jewels. Our friend has put Krull's honour to test, and like all barbarians, he would not refuse. This will certainly give us an advantage with a one-on-one -on -one fight. But that guy is twice the size of ours. You assume that he will rely on his size to win. Let's not be foolish. You can't trust him. Her voice cut through the tension, as if they had all forgotten she existed. Dora had tucked herself in the very back as if not to be seen. Knowing her story, Elnor knew that Dora was completely right for any reservation that she had. I agree. Then let's take him down. Have you seen the size of the teeth on all those orcs? That one's looking right at me and licking his chops! Loren grumbled. Amakuki returned to the group. The challenge has been accepted. One of us will die at dawn tomorrow. Don't be saying like that like you ain't sure who's going to win. You've got us by your side. If he doesn't plan to play by the rules, then neither will we. We'll all make sure the right person goes down tomorrow. No, let me fight him. No tricks. The group was silent for a moment from his request, especially Elnor. This is not what she had in mind when she asked Amakuki to challenge Kroll. It was just supposed to be a way to get him alone. You think you can definitely win this duel? That hardly seems fair if he just gets to kill him by himself. What about me? You must let us fight on our own, otherwise we are not men. If you think you can handle him, then we can do this the clean way. Is this wise? I lay faith with the greatest warrior Grimoire has ever seen. I believe you should too. Elnor looked over at the gladiator, and he stuck out his chest. It seems we must. They left for camp. Kroll kept the orcs at bay so that they could feast on them in the morning. They were awoken by shouting. Dora! Dora! Elnor hopped up quickly and found a distraught Remus. What's wrong? What happened to her? Dora's missing. She's nowhere, I tell you. By then, the entire group had formed around Remus and began scanning the horizon as if to catch a glimpse of her. You've checked? You think I haven't checked everywhere? When I say she's missing, you better believe she is. 
Very well, dwarf. Calm down. We will make sure that she is found. Could she have been kidnapped? No. Ray was hunched against the ground, looking for tracks. She just walked away. If she has gone that way, she is heading for the orcs and Kroll. Elnor went quiet. It could not be coincidental. We need to save her. Why? Why? She's heading right towards danger. Everyone followed Dora's trail, and sure enough, it led right to the orc army in the nearby distant. We will have to look for her some other time. We have a duel to fight. Elnor nodded and unsheathed the sword, hoping Dora was okay for the time being. There was a greater matter at stake. They all found the spot where the two nomads had buried their weapons in the ground, as if it was a mark of their dueling location. Ray offered to hide away on a nearby cliff and act as an immediate end to crawl if the duel went sour. Elnor took on this, took him off on this, knowing he had an excellent shot. The orc army once again filled the plains with a few decorated leaders standing next to Kroll, who was waiting impatiently. I am ready. He raised his shield and slammed it with his sword. Loren nodded. Satisfied, he moved to engage Kroll. The orcs and Loren's followers gathered around both of the duelists stood by their weapons at the centre. Kroll was stoic, but Amakuki pulled his sword out of the ground with a challenging glare. Kroll grunted. You act like nomad. You look like nomad. But you are not nomad. There was a full body reaction in Amakuki from the taunt, his face now contorting in bloodlust. You die. With that, Kroll tore his hammers from the ground and rushed towards Amakuki. He managed to deflect the massive strike. All watched as the two demonstrated why the people were called barbarians. Even though Kroll demonstrated greater strength and more brutal tactics, Amakuki somehow managed to hold his own, proving he had rightfully earned the title of bear in Grimoire. The battle waged for what seemed like hours, but could have been no longer than a minute. In a heated moment, Amakuki used his superior agility to manoeuvre Kroll to lose his grip on his weapons. It worked, and Kroll's hammers flew from his monstrous hands. He was defenceless. The gladiator raised his sword to take the kill. Kroll roared, causing the orcs to break from their ranks and swarm Amakuki. Elnor's gasp was stuck in her throat at the sight. Then she looked up at the cliff, hoping Ray's hand was steady. Bluen had a weapon drawn and charged to the fray. Elnor, Loren, and Amakuki have to be in it, so that's fine. Oh, only allowed three party members. So it's got to be those three. Okay. You want to play dirty? I can play dead. dirty. Oh, bloody hell. Now I've got to use my highest damage dealer to... Kill a guy with one health, that's good. I'm a kooky, you kill that one. Strike him. Strike. Capitation strike would have been completely unnecessary, at least a perfectly good mana or stamina or whatever you can call it when it's a warrior. Life 2 should be sufficient. Dead. Easy enough fight. <laughs> oh, sorry, stretching in my chair there. Amakuki tried to defend himself, but there were too many. They could not kill an entire army by themselves. Crossbow bolts pierced the sky, striking attacking orcs. But more just sprang up in their place. You call yourself a warrior? You fight like a coward. Kroll growled loudly, and the orcs retreated, but their damage had been done. Amakuki was bleeding from several wounds, but he was still standing. I am great warrior, best warrior, orcs no. The entire orc army started to howl menacingly to show their loyalty. The cacophony surrounded them, sending shivers through them, even Lorraine. They could not fight their way out if they decided to attack. The reality of the position that they had put themselves in was suddenly too clear. But the harmonizing of the orcs was disrupted abruptly by a high-pitched yelp. All of them were silent as one of the orcs in the front lines keeled over. Dora pulled her knife out of the dead orc with a look none of them had ever seen before. It was dark, it was serious, and truly sad. You ain't a warrior, you ain't! Her voice trembled as she stepped out of the orc ranks, shedding what must have been an orc disguise. No more hiding, I ain't gonna hide from you no more. Dora! The dwarf woman held out her short knife and took staggering steps towards him. The orcs started hissing at her, but Kroll gave no orders. You are puny. So what? Dora ran forward and pulled, plunged her knife into Kroll's chest. No one breathed a single breath as Kroll looked down at the weapon impaled in him, and then Dora. 
He took the knife out of him and tossed it away without blinking an eye. Run! Leave! Kral scooped up Dora before her legs would let her move. She screeched as he lifted her from the ground. I know you. You smell like Dwarf Village. He grinned, thinking about Dora's hometown. I'd not find you then. Unhand her, you flea-bitten lard weasel! Ramus had marched to Dora's rescue, his axe ready. Ramus, no! Dora swiped at his face in distraction, landing only a mild blow. But in the next second, a crossbow bolt whooshed past her and struck Kral right in the neck. He hollered and dropped Dora. Ramus rushed over and helped her up, and she immediately recovered her knife. The orcs didn't like this turn of events, and started screeching and pouring at the party, itching to kill them. Loren was not pleased either. We fight Kroll. Loren and Elnor ran at Kroll with their weapons ready. The barbarian had gone too far. Dora attempted to stab Kroll as he tried to get the arrow from his neck, but in the next moment, the entire party was on top of him, trying to get a piece of him. Let's kill this son of a bitch. So, back to my normal. Okay, I need to have Dora in the party, so let's put her there. Have him there, and there. Assuming he's pretty... Yeah, he's weak to water attacks, it seems cool. Right, let's take out that healer first. Why do they always focus their initial attacks on Elmore? It's really annoying. Given that he's my primary tank. Okay, Draco, I want that back row annihilated. Dead. Dead. Really? Damn it, still standing. Okay. Maybe he taunt. Oh. Got the damage, it's fine. And the Kuki shield defense. Ran. Probably not going to kill him, pretty close. Oh. Did he taunt some more? Oh, come on! How many bloody taunts do you need to uh, do use potion on her? I'm sure, I've got a revive potion somewhere. Thank you. Yes, I have. Good. Okay, Dora. Kill that guy. He's gone to defensive mode, that's okay, I can handle that. Lizard. <laughs> He's gone. I don't know why they've got such a determination to attack Elmer. It's actually given how much taunting he can do, but okay. I'm assuming it. Yeah, you're immune to paralysis. Why do you immune to paralysis? You're resistant to earth attacks. You want not, however. Let him down. And pommel strike. Life 3 on yourself. Strike him. Strike him. It's immune to paralysis. That probably wouldn't be a bit about to hit him. Again. I can't remember what'll actually get through that. <laughs> yep, hits him. Strike. Strike. I mean, he should be taking damage every turn, so that's all right. Hit him with straight glass. to target actual HP. Straight, straight high damage attack. Straight attack. Magic blast, he's down. And he's very, very dead. Ah, there we go. Not too difficult. Got some good junk out of it. And a couple of people leveled up. Good. The large barbarian hollered in pain and fell to one knee. You cheat! No honor! Silence! Loren unleashed a final blow and Kroll was permanently silenced. After Kroll was dealt with, the various orc leaders split off into separate directions, breaking apart the army. 
They all scampered away, leaving only the dead strewn around in the field. A great sense of accomplishment flooded the group. Horus was now safe again. I would say we just achieved the impossible. We could have an even more impossible task ahead of us. This feat will pale in comparison. General Samel should be notified immediately. Yay, stop the barbarian. And got some XP. Right, I'm kind of overrunning my timer a little bit, and this will be the last video I do in this particular session. For the simple reason that, you know, I've got to go to work and depressing other real world problems like that, so. So, you know, I will be stopping this video momentarily, but I'll finish leveling everybody up. Shot. Right, uh, since I have overrun it a bit, I will save my game here and say thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.